Um, we'd like to get today's session started and online convergence number four started as well. Uh, this is Kevin checking in from the desert out here at Liberty Arising, where the in-person convergence is happening simultaneously to what it is that we're all creating here in this online container uh, for the next few days. So I want to personally welcome each and every one of you to online convergence. Uh, I want to let you know that all of the men here who are dropping into the desert and doing the work um, have been briefed and are here, um, yeah, here in real time, at this time on earth where there's a lot of separation, um, there's a lot of rhetoric out there, and we are coming together continuously in a really good way. And the energy that we're all cultivating here online in these Zoom calls is being felt out here in the desert, just like the energy out here in the desert is going to be felt here in this container. Um, the Zoom calls will be all under the events tab, like you all clearly found, and the videos are going to be uploaded to that stream, and those videos are going to start um, after this call today. So look forward to staying tuned to all of those. Um, I'll be here for most of these calls, kind of guiding you all through with our all-star cast of facilitators that we're going to have for you all this weekend. And with that, I want to pass it to our man, Jetty Azuma from the Rising Man Movement, the Rising Man Podcast. I'm sure a lot of you have heard this man's beautiful voice already, and he's kicking off online convergence with Igniting the Warrior Flame. So thank you all so much for being here. Thank you all for showing up for yourselves in this time, in this space, and setting the time aside for, for this, for connection, for brotherhood, for medicine, for all the beautiful pieces that are going to be coming online throughout us this weekend. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. And Jetty Azuma, my brother, welcome to the space. Let's all put our hands up on the screen. Give some love for Jetty Azuma. And welcome to Online Convergence number four. Heck yeah. Let's kick it off. First things first, can you guys hear me if I'm a little bit away from the mic right here? Give me a thumbs up. Heck yeah. All right. I want you guys to, this is going to be a little bit of chaos, okay? Part of being a warrior is being able to deal with chaos. So I want you guys to unmute your microphones. Unmute your microphones. 79 <laughs> unmuted microphones here. <coughs> Ready for this? <laughs> and I just want you to start beating your chest me like that. Those beats. Replicating that rhythm in the heart. That heartbeat. Been in your chest ever since you were in your mama's belly. Heartbeat that's never given up on you. That pulse connects us to the earth that rhythm that your mom and your dad handed over to you they got from their parents they got from their parents thousands oh, yeah. and thousands of generations going back at first to that human from heart feel that Keeping that flame alive with every breath, with every beat. And those brothers who are out there at Liberty Rising. About those brothers on the screen with you all over the world right now. Putting this drum beat going. Pandemic. Don't care about no quarantine. Boundaries, no borders, no flight restrictions are going to stop this music that we're making together. Feel that drum beat. That heart that doesn't give up. Doesn't know how to stop. Doesn't know how to say never. Doesn't know how to die. 
Get up a little bit. That heart picking up, fellas. We got three days together here. Just getting started. Lighting that flame. Ooh, making that music together, brothers. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> sons, let's go. Out with me, brothers. Back over to your heart. Just feel that in your body for a second. Just feel how you feel. Threw a couple of logs on that flame. Now the fire's getting going. I'd like to ask everybody to mute yourselves again. For now. For now. And just feel that energy flowing through your veins. This conversation that we're having right now is about fire that sacred holy fire that first beam of sunlight from the sun captured inside of trees given back to us in fire i just want to breathe that in for a second feel that flame burning inside of you One of these things I love about men's work is that there's about 500,000 different ways to do breathing exercises. <laughs> and I think all of them are great, but we're going to do this one. So for, for this exercise, we're going to breathe in the nose twice, two short beats, and then we're going to exhale. A, an abrupt, quick, forceful exhale. All right. This is to circulate air through our body quicker than we normally would so that we can get oxygen to our brains, to our fingertips, to our hearts and every other cell in our body, okay? So if you can, you can close your eyes. If you wanna keep them open and keep looking at these beautiful men in front of you, you can do that too. Whatever it is, just keep that rhythm at your pace or as with, with me as close as you possibly can, all right? So we're gonna go in for two beats in the nose, out for one beat through the mouth. It's gonna look like this. <laughs> So let's keep that going for a couple of minutes here. Ready? Let's go. Breathing, bring your arms up above your head as you keep that rhythm. brothers Long breaths in the nose, breathe in. Hold it at the top. Exhale the arms down. Hold. 
Hold it at the bottom. Breathe in deeply through the nose. Arms up. Hold it. And exhale the arms to the bottom. One more time, breathing in through the nose up to the top. Hold it. And exhale. <sighs> My brothers, good morning, good afternoon, good midnight. <laughs> For those of you guys who are way out there on the other side of the world. My name is Jetty Azuma. I am, as Kevin mentioned, the founder of the Rising Man Movement. I am a rites of passage wilderness guide and leadership mentor. I help men find themselves, find a way to become that leader that we all know that we can be. And today I'm here to talk about warriors and warriorship and what it means to ignite that fire that lives inside of all of us. So before we get started, I want to hear from you guys first. I think context is important. It's good to know where we're all coming from. So I need your help to create a working operating definition of what a warrior is. So one at a time without speaking over each other, I want to hear from a few of you and just tell me what is a warrior to you? One or two sentences. What is a warrior? So unmute yourself when you're ready to go. And say your name and where you're checking in from real quick too. This is Oscar checking in from Idlewild, California. Um, for me, warrior uh, means to be able to really control all the archetypes in one, all the uh, fully balanced, you know, fully in control of one's body, one's reactions, uh, emotions, and so on. Mm -hmm. Be able, being, and know when to 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 use that power, and when not to. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Oscar. Good to see you, man. Ditto. Oh, go for it. Denver, and oh, me, can't hear you, bro. Can't hear me. Oh, that's a little bit better. You're a little far away, but hearing all you right, now. So I'll, I'll get nice and close. There you uh, are. For me, a warrior. Nako from Nako and Medicine for the People talks about his mindset of a warrior is praying for compassion, but keeping his knife at his side. And mm. I resonate with that, where it's like you keep the heart open, but you're ready. Mm. I like that. And tell me your name, where you're from? Roger from Denver. Denver. Good to see you, Roger. A couple more. Uh, Vince <laughs> checking in from Los Angeles, California. What's up, Jetty? What up, bro? Um, yeah, for warrior for me is uh, is stepping into the uh, the discomfort, man, the uncomfortable anything uh, in, in my life, and uh, doing what has to be done, um, and just, and just stepping into it, stepping into the the out of the comfort zone, and uh, taking care of taking care of business emotionally, mentally, uh, and and being there for community. Mm -hmm. Love that. Thank you, Vince. Two more. Um, um okay. go, ahead. go ahead yeah check it in from uh brooklyn daniel here and uh i would say i prefer discipline over control and for me what i'm working with is how to kind of have consistent discipline and to also have the courage to have compassion which is to me one of the most courageous acts mm, i like that thank you daniel bk in the house Cool. Um, I guess I'll go. Uh, go Mark it. from Queens, New York. Um, I guess um, for me, it's about being present. And like Daniel said, about discipline, uh, just being aware of myself, how I respond to the outside world, um, being vulnerable, being real, being present as a father and just constantly working on myself and 
and just being aware of myself. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Mark. Sure. Uh, I heard a lot of really great things there about what a warrior is. And <clears throat> truth is, is that we may all have different definitions of what it is and different words that we vibrate that give meaning to this specific word. But it's really a feeling. It's really a sentiment that we that we all connect to and may have different words to describe. But when you when you look at a man, you can tell when he's in his warrior. How can you how can you see a man in his warrior? What do, what do you see? What do you observe about the way that he shows up and presents himself? Go ahead and just jump in, popcorn. Confidence. Confidence. Courage. Courage. Alignment. Alignment. Standing tall. Clarity. Standing tall. What was that other one? Clarity. Clarity. I like that one. Empathy. I didn't catch that one. Say that again. Empathy. Empathy. Mm-hmm. Integrity. Something Integrity. to fight for and to love for. Yes. Say that again, Mitch. Something to fight for and to love for. I like that one. All right. We're going to tuck that one in the back pocket. Let's hear a couple more. Grounded. I heard grounded and then someone else. Unwavering. Direction. Direction. All right. One more. Old. Setting uh, strong Two. boundaries. Boundaries. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. So speaking of warriors and what we're here to do, um, I heard someone say what we're willing to fight for. And uh, fighting is an interesting word. I know for me, fighting was something I was very uncomfortable with until, until I really got into my 20s. Fighting was something I avoided. Although I was fighting all the time, I was fighting the battle that every one of us, every warrior fights. In fact, it's probably the toughest battle that any of us can encounter. Does anybody know what I'm talking about there? The biggest adversary for any warrior. Ourselves. Ourselves. The shadow. That's right. War within. That's right. That's right. So here's the way I look at it is that in my life, until I knew what I was, what I stood for, <clears throat> what I was willing to fight for, I couldn't really step out into the world and, and serve my community. I couldn't step out into the world. I wasn't ready to be a husband. I wasn't ready to be a father. I wasn't ready to be a leader of other men because I didn't even know what ground that I stood on. I didn't know. I, I had spent so much of my life trying to cater to other people's needs and other people's desires, flexing and bending and molding myself to be something I thought the world wanted instead of who I truly was. How many of you guys can relate to that experience? Just show of hands. Yeah. And if that brings up something for you throughout the whole course of this guy, since there's a shit ton of you on here, drop stuff in the comments. I'm not going to be able to read them all, but keep it going. All right. We all have an experience of that because that's, mostly what we're encouraged to be. Most of us were raised that way. Most of us were raised to be someone that would be accepted into society. The problem is, is that you could take these raw materials and you can try to package them in whatever way you want to, but unless you assemble the parts the way that they were destined and pre-coded to be put together, they won't feel congruent. How many of you guys know what that feeling is like inside of you when you're not fully expressing yourself? When the, the, the you that you know you are is not the one that's getting out of bed every day, that's going and doing your work and showing up for your family, etc. We've all been there before. We know what that feels like. You're useless. You're useless when the parts are not put together properly, right? It's like having a beautiful, complex piece of machinery and you let a kindergartner put the pieces together however they wanted. And it looks like one of those, like, uh, you guys remember um, that movie, was it Toy Soldiers? When they, they put the parts back together all funny and the guys are walking around like little zombie, zombie toys. We're not, we're not effective when our parts are not put together. Right? So all of us, all of us who are on here, there's over 90 of us right now. We're at different stages of assembling those parts and then operating that machinery. So if you're on here and you're hearing this and you're like, Oh my God, I I'm, I'm still one of those like zombie dolls. Awesome. 
you're in a, you're in the right place. Maybe you've rearranged and put a couple of those pieces back in the right place and you're starting to feel more congruent, but you're not quite there yet. You're in the right place. Maybe you've been in this for a long time and you know who you are. You know what you stand for. You're out there in the world and you're following your North star right now, walking towards it with purpose. You're in the right place. Every stage of that journey is important, is welcome, is acceptable, is lovable. And we got to give that love back to ourselves during that process. Otherwise, we just remain as defective parts waiting for somebody else to put, our, put us back together. And in my opinion, that's, that's not doing the work. That's waiting to be saved. So I'm going to do this throughout the course of the next 35 minutes. I'm going to open it up for chunks of time. Cause I want to hear from you guys. I don't like just talking straight for an hour. So unmute yourself, share a little bit about what might be coming up for you around what we've talked about so far, maybe where you're at in your journey of putting the pieces back together, discovering yourself, whatever, whatever's true. Yeah. I'd like to go first. Yeah. Um, hey guys, I'm Aviram. I'm from Israel, uh, currently spending time in Greece. Um, I'm exactly at the point where, um, which you just mentioned that I find out, I found out that my parts were assembled in ways that are completely unaligned for me. Um, my purpose was always to, to be that, that guy, that the programmer, the guy that um, I was pleasing people. I was doing things that are not aligned for me. And I always knew that I want to be in service to other people, in service to men and women around the world. And I'm right now, just I dropped my job. I dropped my relationship. I dropped everything around me. And I went into a solo journey in mm. different countries for two months to discover myself, to ground better into my own truth, to find the warrior within. And that's exactly you guys are the first i'm my first week here and i choose to start my journey with with this convergence too yeah yeah Yeah. all right let's just give let's just give a couple of fist pumps up there for my man aviram yeah baby (laughs) you got it bro we're with you man yes a couple more just jump in ben from olympia washington i'm uh in the middle of trying to piece myself back together and my family back together um Mm. We uh, you know, did a lot of bad things a long time ago and came out with my truth. And, and walking through that, and walking through the pain, and walking through the reality of what's coming um, and what may not come. You know, it's, it's all up in the air, trying to figure it out. But you know, I, I cheated on my wife and I did a horrible, horrible things and been lying for 16 years and finally can look at myself in the mirror and say what's next it's time to move forward it's time to time to make you know good decisions it's time to be out in the open Mm -hmm. live in the open and And just share and and share it all the time and be there hey I want you to see something, okay? Everybody who's ever cheated on one of their partners, raise your hand. Just leave it up there so Ben can scroll through the screen and just see hands. So take that in for a second, bro. It's a lot of us, a lot of us who've done that. All right. You can put the hands down. Here's the key is that the only the only time that a warrior is dead is when he says he is. Right. There's, there's only two options when you when you drop a commitment, when you fall out of integrity, you either quit and die, give up or recommit. And as long as you choose to keep staying in the game, the game's never over. So good to see you here, Ben. Thanks for sharing that, man. Thanks for dropping us in a layer deeper. Let's hear from uh, one more of you guys. What's coming up right now? Express yourself. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Daniel. Um, the, uh, I kind of going through this opposite cycle. I was so dominated by work in my life and not nothing spiritual or personal. And then I, two years ago, kind of went through a big reset and have been doing deep spiritual practice deeper with my Zen practice, which is like 12 years going, but then more into like 
sacred spirituality. And then I've kind of, I neglected my work field. And so I kind of got dull. I wasn't sharpening that blade and it's caused some problems in terms of like my advancement. And so it's, it's just this lesson of like, I go through these big swings of grasping for this and all in on that and all in on this. And I need to get to like balance. Mm. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. I can definitely relate to that part of the journey. And I don't know if that ever stops. <laughs> I think that's something I, I spend a lot of time with a lot of old guys that have white hair and they tell me that, Hey man, just buckle up. Cause this, this ride doesn't, it doesn't let up. It doesn't let up until you get off. So heck yeah, man. It's all about staying in the game. Um, so I want to talk about what, uh, let's see, who was it? It was Mitch. Mitch said, uh, you know, a warrior knows what he's fighting, what he's willing to fight for and what he's willing to love for, I believe, if I'm quoting you properly. And for me, a warrior's got to know what, what, he, what he stands for. You got to know what it is that you're willing to defend. It's not what everybody told you when you were growing up. It's not. If you haven't taken that time to decide what your code is, what your personal value and virtue system is, what you stand for, what you're willing to go to bat for, to give your life for, literally and figuratively, that and until you know that, until, until you're clear on what it is you stand for, think of it as morals, as ethics, whatever word you put to that, there's no way that you can walk a purposeful path in life. That's what I found to be true, at least, is that I, I couldn't identify my purpose until on a baseline level, I understood what mattered to me. And when I was still in that comfortable place in my life, before I stepped out of the nest, before I really stepped out to take some risks in my life, I didn't, everything kind of mattered to me. I could justify everything as being somewhat important, but... What do you really stand for at the end of the day when you reduce it down to its most fundamental components? What is that code that you have? In some circles that I run in, we call this terms. A man's terms are what define him. It's what's written all over you. If we followed you around for a few days and we watched how you did your life, I would know what your terms were. You wouldn't even have to speak them because they're embodied. It's how you're living your life already. I'm a husband, I'm a father. I'm a leader of men. I'm a man who builds community around himself. I'm a martial artist. All right, these are things that if you followed me around for a few days, you would say, oh yeah, that's, that's who this guy is. All right. So right now, if, you, if you'd like to, if you got pe paper or pen or you just want to think about it in your mind, just, just think about what those things are. Those things that are uncompromisable, non-negotiable. Those things that are constantly being tested and challenged by every layer of your life, by your relationship, by your partner, by your parents, by your children, even by your job, by society, you name it. Everything that wants to try and infringe upon that territory. What are those things that you stand for? What are those things that you fight for that you wake up for every day? You might think of this as a value or a virtue. Maybe you're not that clear yet. Maybe, maybe you don't know exactly what that is. Sometimes we do this exercise and it, it reveals that you don't actually have something that is solid like that because you have been someone who negotiates those things that you think matter to you. Go ahead and raise your hand right now. If, if, you're, if you're thinking about this and you're like, I really don't know exactly what that is yet. I'm in a play. I'm, I'm figuring that out. Good. Yeah, own that. That's all right. Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter what stage of life you're in. The fact that you're in this question now is all that matters. But you got to know what it is that you're willing to fight for. Because a warrior who's got nothing to fight for isn't a warrior. He's a wanderer. He's a journeyman. He's, he's looking for something. He's seeking. And seeking is okay as long as you know that that's the stage of the journey you're in. So I want to hear from one or two of you guys of what, what are some of those terms? What are, 
a couple of those things that define you. And just for the interest of time, I just want to hear what they are. I don't want to have a bunch of story wrapped up in it. Be precise with your words and telling us what are those terms? What are those values that you fight for? Let's go ahead. Well, and unmute. I would I would like to have a word. Hi, this is uh, Jose from Costa Rica. Well, it really resounded with me because I'm a recovering addict and something that is uh, completely on my terms is that I'm, will, I'm not willing to relapse. So every day I wake up fighting for my life in order not to relapse. So it really resonates with me. Beautiful, man. It's beautiful. What's up? Next. My name's Timothy, checking in from Marshall, North Carolina. I stand for quality, for quality relationships with food, with people, the environment, myself. Hey y'all, awesome. Dominic. Dominic from Erie, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Cool. I'm from Erie, Pennsylvania, and I think one of the main things that I stand for is um, creating intentional community, being a part of that, creating that, gathering that, whatever that looks like. Awesome. All right, one more. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, go for it, Mitch. Hey, I'm Mitch from Portland, Oregon. Um, so my first is my non-negotiable. I stand for my son who's right here, Tova. Hey buddy. His mama and my art, my creativity, my voice, my expression, and my service to brothers and others. Mm -hmm. All right. Lots more, but that's just the first round. <laughs> Well, and that's, that's, that's good, man. Thank you for sharing that. And, and this is important because I find when I make, when I, when I introduce this and, and also when I've gone through this exercise before, I wasn't clear on exactly what I stood for when I got married and what that resulted in. Cause if you, ideally these are things you're clear on before you ever get into a committed relationship. How many of you guys have gotten into a committed relationship and discovered something about yourself and started to shift slightly and that created disharmony and ripples in the relationship, right? Because all of a sudden, you're not who you advertised yourself to be. And it's not your fault that you didn't know who you were and, and what you stood for getting into the relationship. It's not that person's fault that they expected you to be one way and then you became something else, but it, it generates conflict. So ideally, we know what we're fighting for, what we stand for when we go and get into committed partnerships. Because we're, we're facing forward and saying, hey, I've done my work. I know who I am. This is who you can expect me to be. This is also the territory that I'm going to defend. So when you want, some, when you want to do something that competes with me being who I am and who I, who I define myself to be, I'm not going to compromise there. Everything outside of my terms, everything outside of my code and my values, that can be negotiated. As long as I'm honoring those things, I'm available. All right, this is, this is the function of what it does. It helps us survive those relationships because like I said before, everyone and everything in your life is gonna test you and challenge those things. But a lot of times we de de declare these things to be who we are, but we're still, just, we're still living into them. We gotta be honest with ourselves. Is it, is it actually something that defines you currently the way you're living your life? Or is it a goal? Is it an objective? Am I trying to get there? If I, if I do an inventory and an audit of my actions, my decisions, and the way that I show up in my life, am I really earning the right to declare that as something that defines me? This is where uh, some of the men I spend time with say that, you know, the second most powerful force in the universe is a man's ability to believe his own bullshit. And that's why we need <laughs> brothers like each other. So that uh, if, if we're believing our own bullshit and telling ourselves that I am this and you're really not, then you're doing yourself and everyone a disservice. So as you look at those lists, as you look at what you came up with, I want you guys to be honest. Look at that list. It's okay if it's not yet something that defines you. It's all right to have goals, objectives, targets, but be honest with yourself and recognize if it's something that you're actually owning or not. It's part of warriorship for me. Anything come up for you guys when we make that distinction between terms and goals? Yeah, I, I think for me, what came up and you stated is like, and for me, relationship is really 
uh, most important. I mean, I'm, my life is my family and my children. And I guess I never, ever really had those objectives because I was never taught. I didn't have that, you know, anyone to show me like, uh, as, as most men, I'm sure, um, uh, you know, a father figure that would be able to even guide you in the right direction with that information, you know, mm. um, I'm learning those as, as my marriage grows and, you know, mm. we're 11 years into it and I'm still struggling with really harnessing that warrior in several ways. One of them is just to be able to, to, to not get in that deep anger, you know, mm. being able to have healthy conversations, um, non nonviolent, not meaning that, um, there's physical violence, but just yelling is violence, you know, and, and raising voice. And so, you know, that's, that's, what I, I want to be utmost and, and be the most dedicated person and loving and caring and sweet and gentle man that I can be for my family at the same time, be the, the protective, the warrior side that they need to be when, when it's needed and not to be completely moved by every react by every little thing or conversation, you know? And so, mm -hmm. yeah, that that's, I guess I'm still trying to find those. Um, what did you call them? Like um, not boundaries, but like your terms, terms. Territory. Yeah. Your terms, you know, because I didn't know I, I didn't have terms. I didn't, I never yeah. had terms with myself. So how so it was just, they're barely coming up. And it's like, no, I, I, I stand my ground here or no, you know, but it's hard because as you're learning them, it's creating sometimes that, that collision in conflict with your, your partner because of also the working on communication, you know, there's still those egos that kind of get in the way sometimes. And yeah. Dude. I totally know where you're coming from. I just want to see a show of hands for this. If any of you guys have been in Oscar's position where you got into a relationship without knowing what your terms were and then figured out you had to fight back for territory. A lot of times this is what leads to divorce. And we don't need to go into everyone's story right now, but a lot of times it's what leads to divorce because like you said, there's, there's conflict and not all conflict has to be, uh, it definitely doesn't have to be violent. It, it, con conflict or, or discord can actually be really productive, but I'll be honest with you. It's a very, it's a challenging journey. It's harder to regain territory that you gave away in a relationship than it is to step into a relationship, having already established your boundaries and clarity around who you are and what you stand for. Right. And there's, there's two, there's two polarities when it comes to boundaries and I, I want to just mention this here briefly, and then we can go to something else, is there's, there's the passive warrior who has no boundaries, right? Everything is just free-flowing membrane. Everything can come in. Everything can come out. These are the people pleasers of the bunch. You know, raise your hands if you're a people pleaser, if you constantly bend, flex, become whoever everyone else wants you to be. That's, that's one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is... The asshole. We're talking about the guy who just walks around saying, F this, F that. You can't tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want to do anyway. And a lot of times we swing back and forth from one pole to the next. All right. One of you guys mentioned balance. One of you guys mentioned bringing those emotions into harmony. That's, this is part of that journey. Being able to establish and defend our boundaries without creating chaos and destruction around us. Now, just a moment of solidarity. Raise your hand if you've created chaos in your life that's f affected other people because you didn't know how to establish healthy boundaries. You guys already know what I'm going to say before I get it out. You're like, yep, me, that's me, me, two hands. Yeah, not alone, man. That's the other thing. Is this, this is, it's important to be compassionate with ourselves in our journey. And compassion doesn't mean excusing our actions. It means not, it means owning them, facing them, and then being gentle with our humanity, right? This is probably one of the hardest journeys that any of us walks is cultivating a sense, a strong sense of self and who we are 
without beating ourselves into that person. How many of you guys say things in your head that you would never say to another human being? You would never bring yourself to say those things to somebody else because they're just way too painful, way too hurtful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just self-inflicted wounds right there. We're all, we're all guilty of that at some point. We all do that. It's the, nobody's excused of that. Right? We beat ourselves up. But what are we actually getting from that? I actually want to hear, I want to hear from you guys. What, what do you get from beating yourself up? Tell me. Not a damn thing. No, that's not true. That's not true. Think, think a little bit more, Andrew. What do you get from beating yourself up? Really think about it. I, I, you, don't, you don't get to be beaten by other people. Yeah. What do you think, Andrew? I, I think that it is, there is a part, part of it that is that kind of healthy critic of ourselves, looking at ourselves, but it, it tends to, for me at least, it tends to go from just healthy critique of myself of like, okay, what's up? So like, why the fuck do you feel like this? Why do you, you know, why do you always go through these same things in your head? It, it becomes kind of, it becomes conflict then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with you. You know, there, there's definitely a, a healthy version of personal inventory and reflection, but what Aviram said about beating yourself up so that others don't get a chance to, mm. right? True. It's, it's, it's protecting ourselves. That, that's, that's what the inner critic does. That's, that's self-preservation at its finest. If I'm, if I'm over here beating the crap out of myself, if you saw somebody on the street beating the crap out of themselves, you just kind of walk far away. You're like, oh, wow, that's, that's, that's unfortunate. What is this guy doing to himself? And that nobody goes over and beats on somebody who's already beating the crap out of themselves. It's a protection mechanism. So uh, I just wanted to drop that piece in because that, that one really blew my mind. I think I was, I was uh, being interviewed by a, a team of men. And one of the guys said to me, he says, he says hold on a second. Because I was going down that, falling on my sword, beating the, the crap out of myself. He's like, don't do that. Don't do that. You're taking all the fun away from us. That's our job. <laughs> uh, and he was he was joking but uh but yeah self-deprecation man it's a slippery slope all right here's another really good one um anybody know my bro kioni hanale anybody recognize that name and if any of you guys listen to the podcast that i do he was just on the podcast a week ago amazing brother from um, out in hawaii hawaii is the proper way to say it he, uh, he gave me a different definition of warrior last week when we were talking. He said that a warrior is someone who fights for quality of life for all beings. Quality of life. It really like stopped me in my tracks because I grew up thinking that warriors were the ones out there on the battlefield. And I knew it had something to do with fighting and defending and protecting, but fighting and defending and protecting what? And when he said... Quality of life. Covered so many years for me. Hey guys, do me a favor and mute yourselves if you're if you're not currently muted. Thank you. Yeah. And I, re, I as I was reflecting on that, it, it made me think that there's so many times in my life where I've apologized for my warriorship, where I where I you know kind of hid myself from the world because I was worried about how other people would receive it where I didn't take a stand because I didn't know if I could, if I could really step out and, and own that space to me, a warrior's unapologetically who he is. Right. And because you're clear on, on who you are and what you're, what you're in service to, you can never be out of integrity with that. It may rock the boat. It may ruffle feathers. In fact, it definitely will. If you stand for something, there's somebody on this planet, more than a couple people who are going to disagree with you, who are going to challenge you, who are going to call you names or, or say things that you don't agree with, try to, try to diminish your flame. But again, going back to that polarity piece, we got to be able to navigate the world and stake our boundaries without creating chaos and carnage everywhere we go. Now, how many of you guys have done that in your life where you've gone out and you've created a mess everywhere in your life. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear from a couple of you guys. Tell me why. 
tell me what was going on and, and keep it as brief as you can. Yeah. Hi. Go ahead, Miguel. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, hello, I'm Miguel from, I'm from Lisbon. Um, and for me, the, the main thing was really when I started working on myself and living with my family, um, like I just started like blaming on my parents what I was not able to resolve within myself. And it just shook everything. And like ra the raging me would just be transferred upon my, mainly my father because of that relationship with the father and, you know, the anger being very present. So for me, yeah, mainly like in the start of what you can call the the awakening, if you will, um, living with the ones you love the most can be very fiery. And when that fire is, you start getting in touch with it, but don't really know what to do with it and don't understand it, you just start projecting it and it can really burn the village. Yeah, absolutely, man. I love that African proverb i believe it is it says if if you don't initiate the boys then they'll come back and burn down the village yeah, just to feel the village. Heat. yeah yeah i've been there anyone else one more want to drop in Were you I'm, uh, chaos? <clears throat> oh. I'm danny from brooklyn um, and um i spent the last 20 years i have like i had like a classic mother wound and uh, I spent the last 20 years shitting over every woman I was ever in a relationship with, trying to take from her what I felt like I didn't get from my mother. Mm. And uh, so it's been the last three or four years doing that shadow work has been some, <laughs> some traumatic experience for me. But yeah, I created so much chaos in the last 20 years that mm. it's, uh, and that's a lot of times why going back to what we were just saying a few minutes ago, I'm, my inner critic is constantly beating me up for that. Um, you know, I'm still working through trying to stop calling myself a piece of shit over all the stuff that I've done, mm. you know, the guilt and shame that I have from the last 20 years, yeah. but that's why I'm here. Hey, Danny, we're not going to move on from you just yet, man. I want you to keep yourself unmuted. Okay. And, uh, I, I think Kevin's still on here. If you can just, uh, spotlight Danny for us so we can all just see his face front and center. Um, I want you to take a minute and just want you to love up on yourself. Let, it, let us witness you loving up on yourself because calling yourself a piece of shit all the time, the thing about words is that they reinforce beliefs. And you've got 90, 94 other dudes here right now who are going to take the next minute or two to hear you love up on yourself because you matter. So go for it, man. Floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'm absolutely like, I'm, I'm recognizing it. I'm coming into my power. I know that I'm an infinite being of love and light. and yeah, man, it's all coming out. I feel it bubbling up right now. Keep it's going. hard for me to even say the words. My wife tells me every day that she loves me and that I'm perfect, and it makes me so uncomfortable to hear. Mm. It's, it's like I physically feel discomfort when she says it, and she says it multiple times a day because she's trying to remind me, you know, we've been doing this work together. And I know, and I know I've come so far, and I know that that all of those things I went through, I had to go through so that I could transmute them. And I know that it's benefiting me, it's benefiting the collective. Whew, I love myself and I'm worthy because I'm a piece of God, I'm, I'm source. Having a human experience, you know, I know these things intellectually, <laughs> I'm just trying to get my body and my emotions to align with those beliefs, you know? So tell your, talk to yourself now, like, hey, Danny, you're pretty awesome. <laughs> Danny, you know what? You're doing really great work and I'm really proud of you. Hmm. I'm proud of you for all this work that you're doing and you've stepped up and yeah, you made a lot of mistakes along the way, but you're working really hard now to correct them and to make them right and to make sure you, you don't make those mistakes again. And you know what? You will make mistakes again. And even when you do, it's all part of the plan and it's all good. And we're going to keep going forward. And I love you and I'm proud of you. And it's all good. Yeah. Thank you for stepping up. <laughs> yes. 
Beautiful, bro. I want you to do that with yourself every day in the mirror. Eyeball to eyeball. Talk to yourself like that. All right. Reinforce that belief that you are doing great work. You uh, are you. an amazing man. It's good. It feels a lot better. I felt that, that emotion bubbling up and I feel it released now. Yeah. Beautiful, Danny. Thanks Thank for you. stepping in and being vulnerable there, bro. Yeah, of course. All right, guys. I've got one more really important piece that I got to share with you. I, I would be remiss if I didn't speak about this next component. If you guys who follow me or know me a little bit, you've heard me, I'm sure, talk about ancestry. I am a second generation Japanese American. My uh, mother's side of the family is from Italy in the Middle East. And I don't know the name of my ancestors past three generations ago. And some of my indigenous brothers from all over the world can track their ancestry back. Some of them thousands of generations, thousands. They know the names of thousands of generations of ancestors. And I don't want to assume anything, but I would venture to say that any of us here who are the children, or I don't know what the word is, I'll say processors of people who migrated or immigrated to a, a place that's different, where that you grew up differently from where your culture comes from, our families had to let go of a lot of culture in order to assimilate, in order to become a part of a new world. A lot of our culture was left behind. Our traditions, our initiatory rites, our practices, our prayers, our spiritual practices, our songs, they were left behind. And the reason that this is so important is that not just a warrior, but a man, every human has to know and be connected to where they come from. We have to know where we come from. The easiest way to make your life all about you is to neglect the fact that there are thousands and thousands of generations of humans who did everything that they could to pass that DNA torch forward. We, ha we, don't, we have no idea and no way of knowing the depths of what our ancestors have done so that we could be here. And when you walk around in your life with that context, when you're operating from a place of my life is only mine because it was given to me by people who came before me, I was blessed by the people who came before me to have this life right now. In fact, it's not even mine. My life is in service to the people who are coming after me, the people that I serve here right now. That context of life, if you can look at your life through that lens, then trying to wake up and find purpose every day doesn't become an issue anymore. And yeah, this is what Go ahead, Leslie. Go ahead, man. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you go ahead, brother. No, I'm sorry. No, man. You could you do it. What do you got? Something's something's it's percolating. A, it did. So you hit you hit it right on the head. I'm a black African American. Love the United States of America. But over these last six months, I've been crying in the heart mm. to understand where my ancestry is from. And so what I did was I took uh, a DNA test, uh, African ancestry. I wanted to know what tribe I actually came from. And so when I get this test result and I find what actual African tribe that I come of, I am jumping my ass on a plane. Mm -hmm. And I am going to stand in the middle of that tribe if it still exists. And I'm going to let God tell me what my existence was and what my purpose was through the spirit. And I really truly think that I'll be fulfilled of what I came here from. Unfortunately, what was taken from us as warriors, as you know, our African brothers are warriors. And I'm going to be able to feel once and for all where I came from and what my purpose was, was in life and how those ancestors did that DNA blood all the way through till I'm standing here today. So I feel you, brother, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but <laughs> right on the money. No, you're good, bro. Right you, just, you, just, you just served me up the alley-oop because that's exactly where we're going with it. So you, you got it, man. Uh, and, uh, and I pray for your, for your journey to bring your DNA Thank back you. home. You know, to make, to I'm going to send the pictures. Circle. 
I'm going to send the pictures. <laughs> there you go, man. So All right. here, here's the thing, fellas, is, and I'm going to go over a few minutes. If you guys need to go, you guys can go whenever you need to, but we're going to do this because it matters. Um, just because you don't know who your ancestors are by name, just because you don't know the specific stories or lineage, doesn't mean that the game is over, right? You're here today. You have breath in your body. You have blood moving through your veins right now. I love that Mitch has his boy on the screen right now because it makes me think of my children and that our job right now is to make sure that they know every ancestor that we do. Right now, you can, you can go and you can find out as much as you can about the people that you come from. You can ask the names. You know the names of your parents? Maybe, maybe not. You can find out the names of your grandparents. Maybe, maybe not. Go back as far as you can. And even just once a day in the morning, just say their names out loud and thank them for what they did so that you could be here. And for all those other thousands of generations back to the first people, you can thank them too. You don't have to know their name. Just acknowledge them, right? That grief that you feel, Leslie, I feel it too, man. I've cried for this many times because there's nothing I would like more than to know the names of, where I, of the people I come from. But you know what? I know in my beliefs that they're just happy that I'm here. They're overjoyed that I'm talking to almost 100 men on a Friday morning from all over the world, talking about how we can be the best version of ourselves for the future. And that it's never over. Maybe we don't know those names, but I guarantee you that my children are going to know all the names that I do and that they're going to understand the importance of passing that forward. We can create a new link in the chain. If the chains were broken, that's okay. We can start a new one right now, today. Honor that ancestry. And I guarantee you, you will feel lifted by that connection. You'll feel lifted by knowing that you have purpose on this planet because you're connected all the way back and that they're always with you. So to wrap up here, guys, we're just going to take about four more minutes. I just want you to put your hand on your heart and close your eyes for a moment. And one hand on your heart. If you have your other hand free, I want you to just put it on your shoulder and rest it there gently. And right now we're just acknowledging where we come from those thousands, hundreds of thousands of millions of people that have come before us that did things we will never even know of so that we could be here, offering gratitude, feeling the cells in our body vibrating because all of that ancestral coding that lives inside of our spinal column, in our DNA, in our bloodstream, that's the wisdom. That's the only history that matters and we can't be separate from it because it literally lives inside of us. It keeps repopulating and repurposing our cellular structure, passing it forward. You're here in this moment because you're connected to a line of peoples. There's no other way you could arrive here if not for that. So when you step out into the world and you're carrying your warrior flame with you along this path of purpose, living a life of virtue, giving back in the best way that you know how. I want you to imagine and visualize an army of ancestors walking behind you in formation with their hands on your shoulder, with their hands on your back, holding you up because you were the prayers that came to existence. You are living, breathing, walking prayers of the people that came before you. You can never take that away. You can never lose that. It's always yours. My brothers, thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for carrying a fire in your heart, however you're doing that right now. Thank you for knowing that you're not alone on this journey, for being here regardless of any restrictions. You guys found a way to participate in convergence even when you live on a different continent. That's incredible. 
Go out there and keep being the men that we need you to be. We're in this together, fellas. Much love, many blessings. Aho, lasso, kamati. I love you guys. To all the brothers out there who are watching this on a recording, I'm with you. I see you. I feel you. Let's go, baby. Convergence is getting going. Ah! <laughs> oh, man. Jenny, brother, thank you so much for bringing this thank medicine you. through. Fucking potent, powerful Honor. session. I just want to highlight something that you said, man. A warrior fights and protects the quality of life of all beings. A warrior fights and protects the quality of life of all beings. In a time in our world where the quality of life for beings is potentially being jeopardized, it's time for us to continue to rise in containers as men, creating this type of positive energy to go out in the world and bring this forward. So I just want to leave you all with that bit. Um, fuck, man. This is potent. Just full, full transparency from my end. I'm here in the desert right now, dropping into a container with almost 200 men, and then coming here on this screen and dropping in this container with 100 men. And I think I'm the luckiest man on planet fucking Earth right now, seeing all you men showing up in all these big and powerful ways. Um, fucking I love you, Kevin. Yeah, room. bro. Fucking Thank you, Kevin. I would just uh, want to say one thing that Jedi told me one time, and it's really recorded in my mind. It's in my heart. I bring it with my soul. And you said that time, bro. It was, uh, yes, doing the work. Yes, we're doing the work. Yes, about the work. And then it's like, but present invokes us for action. And it's mm -hmm. like, as much as we're learning, it's important to bring it into action and not stay in, in the state of like, just receiving the work and going through it. It's like, do some work, bring the action, do some work, bring the action. And that really embodies it. So thank you for those words. They're still with me, bro. Great to yeah. see you all. Love yeah. you, bro. <laughs> Boy, yeah, we miss you out in the desert, man. And Jenny, bro, we missed you at the fire circle last night. That's for sure. Um, um, but logistics, I want to update you all a little bit with what we have going on out here. So our Zoom schedule is all under the events tab. You all clearly found it because you're here. All those links are there for the eight sessions during online convergence. These are all going to be recorded and uploaded. So you all are going to have access to all of this. If you can't make the live calls, I encourage you all to continue making all of these live calls. Our next one today with Trevor Spring. Uh, it's 1 p.m. PST. All the events will automatically update to your time zone. So know that. The other piece on the schedule, we have the, the live calls from Liberty Arising out here in California and Hakumba that are being uploaded. Our media team is out here capturing these moments, working on the editing in real time and giving them to you. They're doing a lot of work out here. These guys also specifically work with the man Jetty here on the screen. And so the actual time release of these videos is going to change a little bit. But we're committing to getting these videos out to you on the day that we've agreed upon. So don't be looking at the exact time release of these videos, but they're going to be popping up in this feed continually that you all are going to have exclusive access to for being here and being a part of this container. So with that, I'd like you all to unmute yourselves Give Jetty Azuma some big fucking love from wherever you Watch are in the world right love. now. We got in that through. I love you all so much. We'll see you here in the next session with Trevor Spring. And with that, I am checking out.